You're looking at a live shot at the media room at Gillette Stadium here in Foxborough, Massachusetts, a day that many UMass football fans have been looking forward to for decades. A press conference about to announce the moving to the FBS level and the MAC conference about to commence. Good afternoon, I'm Josh Maurer. We thank you for tuning in on CBS3 now. And coming up over the next hour or so, we'll be bringing you live coverage of the press conference in which UMass makes its formal announcement of its intentions to move up a level for its football program. Let's join John McCutcheon, the athletic director, now. Well, good afternoon, everybody, uh, on this great day in UMass athletic history and for the University of Massachusetts. We couldn't be more excited to be with you today. Uh, we, I'll go over a few format rules and then we'll get into our program. We have several people that will be speaking this afternoon and at the conclusion we'll be open and available for questions uh, from the media. After that, uh, everybody here, including Coach Kevin Morris, will be available for individual interviews. So with that, I would like to turn it over to uh, an individual who, without whose leadership and vision, we wouldn't, wouldn't be standing here today. Uh, when I met with Chancellor Holub about eight months ago, and he gave me the directive to look into the possibility of moving our program to the FBS level and the NCAA, it was a daunting task. It took me a little while to get, get, catch my breath and get ready for what lay ahead. But I couldn't be more excited how the process has gone. And with that, I'm going to turn it over to the Chancellor of the University of Massachusetts Amherst, Robert Holub. Thanks so much, John. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm thrilled to announce that uh, the football program of the Commonwealth's flagship campus, the University of Massachusetts Amherst, will join the Mid-American Conference and move into the football bowl subdivision, the nation's top tier of college football. As you might imagine, this exciting news is a reality due to the contributions and hard work of many people. I begin today by thanking outgoing UMass President Jack Wilson, who has been supportive of this initiative and of the Amherst campus from the very beginning, and Trustee Chair James Karam, who has been a consistent champion for UMass and provided invaluable assistance to us as we move forward. I also wish to thank the Vice Chairman of the Board of Trustees, Henry Thomas, for his support and guidance as well as Paul Revel, who is not only the Secretary of Education, but also a member of the Board of Trustees. Our move to the FBS is made possible in large part through the efforts and generosity of the Kraft family who have offered us use of Gillette Stadium for the majority of our home games. We are truly excited at the prospect of seeing our Minutemen take the field at Gillette, and we offer our sincere gratitude to the Kraft family. Without their support, we would never have been able to make this announcement today. I also want to thank the MAC, and especially the commissioner of the MAC, John Steinbrecher, for the invitation to join the conference. Their offer put the ball in play, so to speak, and we are ever so grateful for this wonderful opportunity. Finally, I would like to acknowledge the efforts of our athletic director, John McCutcheon, who spent hours attending to the details of this move, as well as the athletic staff in the department who have worked extremely hard to make this moment happen. Financially, the move will work well for us. We have looked at all aspects of this transition to the FBS very carefully, and we believe that after an initial investment and in a very few years, we will be using less funds from our general budget to support athletics than we do now. The move is not only advantageous to us from the perspective of the increased profile of our football program and of, uh, of athletics in general, but also from a sober consideration of our finances. Playing at the top level of college football is consistent with our role as the flagship campus of the Commonwealth. UMass Amherst is the premier public research university in the state and in the region with an expansive alumni base. It is only fitting that we should play in the premier division of college football. This move advances our aspiration to assume our rightful place in the upper echelon of national public research universities. 
Most such institutions compete at the FBS level and all flagship universities in the prestigious Association of American Universities play FBS football. At the University of Massachusetts Amherst, we seek greatness in all that we do. Our move to the top of the college football world now becomes part of our overall move towards ever greater national prominence. Thank you once again to everyone who helped make today a reality, and go you Mass. Thank you, Chancellor. And our next speaker probably didn't realize it when he built this magnificent facility and entertainment complex that he was really laying the groundwork for the future of UMass football. <laughs> but uh, he did, because without this facility, this would not be possible. And we can't thank him enough. Uh, it's my pleasure to introduce now Mr. Robert Kraft. Thank you, Jim. Um, matter of fact, we did have it in mind all the time. <laughs> because uh, the Minutemen and Patriots go together. Uh, but this isn't about the Patriots today, so I take that back, Commissioner, because <laughs> we don't have any relationship. I'm here speaking uh, on behalf of the Kraft Group and Gillette Stadium and how happy we are to brand with UMass. Um, I always have had a strong uh, sentiment and tie to UMass. Uh, I know firsthand uh, that it's a great, I, I think it's in the top 50 in, in the world, it's rated in the top 50s as a great academic institution. Actually, before I met my sweetheart, I used to date a girl there out at the Amherst campus, so I'm, <laughs> I'm familiar with it, and there were some roots. Uh, I probably shouldn't have mentioned that. Uh, <laughs> I'll get in trouble for that one. But, you know, when our family bought the uh, team back in 94, part of our objective, we're passionate about the sport of football. We think that football uh, represents much more than a game. It's for young men, it's a way of learning discipline and a way of life. And if you're successful, you build team. It helps you in everything you do, subjugating your, e your personal objectives for the good of the team. And so we wanted to see it develop at a lot of levels. And we've seen a heightened interest at the youth level with Pop Warner at the high school level. In our Hall of Fame, we honor all the championship teams throughout New England, and they come back and put their jerseys up. And we, we have not seen it happen as rapidly in the college area. And I'm really happy that in a small way, we can help to have UMass be the third team uh, to be in the FBS in the New England region. Uh, it's, it's a school that has a tremendous tradition. Uh, it's, it's academic strengths are really uh, excellent, and we, we believe that this will help attract even more students and financially become something that will be very strong. It will be a great cash flow down the road and help support all the uh, uh, sports programs at UMass. So we're honored to be branding with you, and we're excited, uh, and we look forward to you playing in bowl games. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Kraft. And next, a gentleman whose uh, threshold I showed up on about eight months ago and have continued to make his life uh, miserable ever since. But he's been great uh, and very supportive through this whole process. Commissioner of the Mid-American Conference, John Steinbrecher. Thank you and good afternoon. Uh, Chancellor Holub, Mr. McCutcheon, and Mr. Kraft, and to the UMass community and most importantly to the students and student athletes at the University of Massachusetts Amherst. I am very pleased to announce that the University of Massachusetts Amherst has accepted an invitation issued by a unanimous vote of the conference's Council of Presidents to join the Mid-American Conference as a football only member. UMass will begin playing a full conference football schedule in 2012 and be eligible to compete for the conference championship in 2013. There are a number of reasons why our membership believes UMass is an excellent addition to the Mid-American Conference. The University of Massachusetts Amherst, the flagship, flagship institution of the UMass system, is one of the nation's finest universities. The values of UMass match the values of the conference's other member institutions. 
UMass has a strong football tradition, having won five CAA titles in the past 13 years. And this will balance our football divisions. Teams will play an eight-game conference schedule with six games against teams within their division and two games against teams outside their division. This broadens the conference's footprint by providing access for the MAC into, the Boston, into Boston, the nation's number five media market, and Hartford Springfield, the number 31 media market in the country. The MAC now has a footprint within 10 of the top 50 media markets in the country. This will also increase the conference's value to its media and marketing rights holders. Additionally, consistent with our relationship with our other football-only member, Temple University, MAC member institutions will play four men's and four women's games against the University of Massachusetts Amherst. In the final analysis, the addition of the University of Massachusetts Amherst brings value to the Mid-American Conference. UMass, welcome to the Mid-American Conference. Welcome to the FBS. Welcome to the BCS. Thank you, John. <laughs> and next, I'd like to call to the, to the uh, podium an individual who's looked out for the, the, the University of Massachusetts in his role as chair of our Board of Trustees. His support and diligence in those responsibilities has been tremendous, and we can't thank him enough for his support of this whole endeavor. Board Chair James Karam. Thank you, John, and good afternoon. On behalf of the University of Massachusetts uh, and our Board of Trustees, I am delighted to say um, we are here to celebrate three strong initiatives. Our decision to move into the FBS, our football team's entry into the Mid-American Conference, and our new alliance with Gillette Stadium and the Kraft family, one of the nation's leading brands in professional sports. This is an important step for the university as participation in the FBS excites students, energizes friends and alumni, and sends the message that the University of Massachusetts competes at the highest level. Competing at the highest level is not something new for our students or for our faculty in the classrooms and in the lab, and it is something our alumni do all over the world. It is the reason, as Robert has earlier pointed out, that the University of Massachusetts, Massachusetts was selected by the Times of London as one of the top 25 universities in the world. And now our football team will be playing terrific teams at a premier stadium and will be associated with one of the greatest professional sports ownership groups we could select. What could be better for UMass? This is a step that we probably should have taken many years ago and remedy, remedying this situation is a tribute to Chancellor Holub and his astute leadership, to our athletic, athletic director, John McCutcheon, McCutcheon, his leadership and expertise, and to our trustees like Henry Thomas, who were so supportive throughout this entire effort. You have achieved something important today for UMass and this Commonwealth. Again, I am thrilled, of course, that our new football program has partnered with one of the great professional sports organizations, the Kraft Family, which will bring excitement and attendance to our state, our school, and especially our brand. And the good news is that this move makes sense from a bottom line perspective. The financial data underpinning this decision shows that in time, the university will be spending less from our general budget to support athletics. So as chairman of the Board of Trustees, I am delighted to see and certainly view this as the proverbial win-win for UMass and the Commonwealth. While we are understandably excited about the future, I would be remiss if I did not say something about the tradition of UMass football. Simply stated, the teams and the coaches of the past have brought great honor and glory to our program. From the national championship in 1998 to competing for the championship game in 2006, to all the conference titles and all of the players who've gone on to play and even succeed in the NFL, this has been one of the tremendous football programs. UMass has an has a, has a excellent tradition within football, but now the great news is that our football program, which has always competed at the highest level, will be excelling in a conference that is listed at the highest level in this country. And we can't wait to see what the Minutemen will achieve in the years ahead. Thank you, Chancellor, Robert Kraft, and the Kraft Group. This is a great day for UMass. Bring on the Big Mac. Thank you.
And now I'd like to call to the podium the Massachusetts Secretary of Education and member of the U University of Massachusetts Board of Trustees, Mr. Paul Revel. Thank you very much, John. Um, on behalf of Governor Patrick, Lieutenant Governor Murray, and the entire Patrick Murray administration, I want to add our congratulations uh, for today's exciting news to all those who participated in making it happen. In particular, I want to add my recognition for the leadership uh, uh, that this uh, partnership represents. Uh, to you, Chancellor Holub, for your leadership in, in, in making this happen, Mr. Kraft, for your partnership, uh, Commissioner Steinbrecher, for welcoming us uh, into the MAC, Chairman Karam. Uh, for your oversight of this whole proposition from the beginning, uh, along with your colleague, Vice Chair uh, Henry Thomas, uh, the uh, work of the board on this has been pivotal, and Director McCutcheon for your leadership and vision and persistence in this, and everybody else who's been involved in the work that has uh, brought us here today. This is great news for the university and for our students, faculty, and staff, and for our entire alumni network, many of whom center around this area, and this will add an attraction for them and a connection for them to the university. But it's also great news for the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. It adds an element of excitement here and sheds an even brighter spotlight on the fantastic education found across our public campuses and, and uh, enables us to continue our work to highlight that UMass Amherst is our flagship campus. Today's news strengthens our <clears throat> ability and enhances our message that public higher education in Massachusetts is an excellent option for all students. And we know that UMass Amherst in particular, as has been said, is a world-class institution, a top-ranked university with motivated students, talented and committed faculty, internationally recognized research, and a powerful athletics program. Today's announcement of our very strong football program joining the MAC and entering the FBS only solidifies our standing as a preeminent public institution of higher education, and this will bolster our efforts to recruit students and attract faculty. The news of playing additional home games here at Gillette Stadium is icing on the cake. I had the good fortune of attending the game uh, with UNH here this past year, and it was an amazing experience that I know will be replicated time and time again. This news also propels UMass Amherst football into the national spotlight with the promise of nationally televised games providing an even larger platform and spotlight on the doings and uh, success and achievements of this university. So once again, on behalf of the Patrick Murray administration, congratulations to all of you who made this partnership possible on this great news, and I look forward to our continuing partnership uh, to make this university as great as it possibly can be for our students and our commonwealth. Thank you very much. Thank you, Paul. There are a couple of individuals that I also want to thank. Uh, Mr. Lance Langford from CSNL International, who was our consultant in this entire process and an invaluable help. I also want to point out and thank our athletic council back on our campus. It's a, it's a group made up of faculty, staff, students, and alumni who voted unanimously to support this move several months ago. Of that group, in particular, I want to thank Glenn Wong, our faculty athletic rep who is with us today, who also was with us every step of the way along this process. Uh, Jim Julian from the President's Office is here today re representing President Wilson, who couldn't be with us. Jim, you can take this back to uh, as, a, as a going away present for, for President Wilson. And also, I'd be remiss if I didn't point out and thank uh, all of the members of the Colonial Athletic Association and before that, the Atlantic 10 football group, who we've competed with for so many years. We've had great affiliations, we've had great rivalries, and we will miss them uh, dearly. But we are just as excited about our future in the MAC and what, what opportunities lay ahead. So what does lay ahead? We need to focus on several things. We have a lot of work to do. It, it's been a hard uh, haul to get to this point, but we have much more work ahead of us. We need to build our fan base. We have several outstanding programs regarding the promotion of season tickets. We're going to recognize our longtime supporters out in Western Massachusetts, but we have special programs to entice and bring in new fans from the eastern portion of the state as well. Right now, we have on our website all of this information, and as they used to say in the olden days, operators are standing by for anybody who would like to order season tickets. We will also be working very hard at putting together our non-conference schedule. Uh, over the past few weeks, as this uh, possibility has gotten more and more public. The amount of expressed interest from some of the most visible programs in the country 
uh, interested in, in scheduling us and playing in this magnificent venue has really been astounding. It would be uh, premature to list any names today, but they are from all of the major conferences across the country, and we're very excited about what opportunities lay ahead. In terms of local competition, certainly we're going to reach out to Mr. DeFilippo and Ms. Mr. Hathaway. I just thought I'd put that out there publicly to see if they'd be interested in building some rivalries as well. So the gauntlet has been laid, and we'll see what happens with that conversation. We also know we need to improve our on-campus facilities. Uh, to compete realistically at the FBS level, we need to have adequate training facilities on campus, and that will be the focus of our fundraising efforts over the next several years. By the 2014 season, we, have, we hope to have on pl in place on campus a new training facility for football that will be on a par with anybody in the conference and several across the country. So that is going to be a major focus for us. And finally, there's a little work for the guy standing in the back of the room, Coach Kevin Morris. I, when, I, when this opportunity and challenge presented itself, Kevin embraced it with all the energy and excitement that you would expect. We have a lot of work ahead. We have a team that's excited about this opportunity to be the ones that have led us through this transition, and I know they can't wait to get started. So this, this is a tremendous day for UMass Athletics and Minuteman Athletics. We couldn't be more excited to have the opportunity to raise the exposure of the university and our programs again to a national level with another sport. We have a rich history, and we're excited to get on with the future. And in, in terms of what's the most important about this for the media, obviously, for those of you who cover us every day in all of our games, is that from now on, all the venues we play in will have elevators. So that's a big step. You, I, I've heard the complaints before. And with that, we're going to open it up for questions for the, for the, for the folks here in the dais. And Jason, I'll let you coordinate that. So. Well, the only thing I would say is that it's a it's a good agreement for both of us. Uh, it's something. I might say I think it's Please. a better deal for UMass, and we're happy. <laughs> and it, and if there's huge attendance, it'll work out well for everyone. But uh, I think that we had some very good negotiators on the UMass side, and so we've come up with a a way of sharing. So there's uh, very little downside risk. And, and I think that was the prudent thing and correct thing. And since we believe that this is going to be very successful, I think it's a chance for everyone to make out well. So if you just want to raise your hand and then state your name and affiliation. Go ahead, Steve. Very positively. Our, our students in particular are excited about the fact that we're going to be moving to, the, to a higher level, uh, the opportunity to play nationally ranked teams, nationally visible teams, both in the conference and outside the conference, and I think they're very excited about. Uh, when we presented this to our athletic council, really the loudest voice and support came from our student student members of the group and I think that's reflective that's of great. many of the students on campus. Really great. Go ahead. I'm Trey Yates, um, the first Dr. Steinbrecher. Um, with, with UMass be moving into the Eastern Division, do you assume, uh, or and also, are there stadium requirements in the MAC? Uh, will UMass have a deadline to expand or upgrade the stadium to a certain uh, level? See if I can give you two answers. Um, divisional alignment has not been determined yet. We have had no formal discussions at this point. We hope to come out of our spring meetings at the end of May with a decision on that, uh, and we'll work through a process and come out with that. But at this time, it, uh, it would be speculation to say who's going where. With regard to the stadium, as we work through the process with them, we identified issues. Uh, they are addressing them. Is there a firm timeline on that? No. Uh, but we expect uh, those, uh, those upgrades to, to take place in a timely fashion, and, and we'll be involved with that. Ron. Ron, Here, or 
we see this venue as an outstanding opportunity for us for, for a very, very long time. Uh, by, by nature of coming here, we probably have, if not the best collegiate venue in the country, it's pretty close. We do want to do some improvements on our stadium on campus. There's a possibility that we could move one or two games back there when it's, when it's in a position that we can host uh, 1A caliber games. Uh, right now, the press box facilities are, are not such that we could accommodate it, and we need to, to address those needs. But the primary home uh, for UMass football for the foreseeable future, I think, for, is going to be here at Gillette Stadium. probably should let Dan Murphy answer that but I, I um, we we have a facility here it actually goes back to the last question that to replicate this facility now um, in America and I know what's going on in some other NFL areas it it, it, it would cost close to a billion dollars in that range uh, we have basically offered that to UMass, and hopefully they're going to build build a program that's exciting for us in this region. I think this is the one area of the country that is lacking in big college football, and I think it does so much for uh, the university. You have 120,000 alumni around here, some of whom live right in this region. I, I have not gotten any complaints uh, from any any resident saying that they they want to see more football. I know sometimes you have a way of taking on uh, a viewpoint that some of us never hear or see, so I can't speak to that. But I probably should have you talk to Dan Murphy to get more data on that. Dan, do you want to? You know, all I know is the town is looking for us to help with a lot of different projects and funding a lot of things. And we invested here. We, we have a stadium that's probably used 30 days, if that, a year. Um, we have a lot of capacity. Uh, the town of Foxborough benefits every time we have an event here. I haven't ever heard anyone from Foxborough say, please don't bring events here and generate more revenue. But maybe you talk to different people than I do. Murph, I don't know, do you? So the first one, yes, there is the possibility of adding a 12th game, and yes, we would like to. Uh, it's unfortunate that we're this late in the scheduling process that there really aren't that many uh, programs out there that, that have open dates remaining and on a date that we would have open. But uh, we do have members of our staff uh, looking into it to see if that might be a possibility. Yeah, and I, I, I think you hit the nail on the head. We're going to have to be working cooperatively to introduce both sets of organizations to each other. We have the luxury here in that we do have a rivalry built in with Temple University already, and so that will be of, of great assistance. Steve. Well, 
Well, I can't really speak for Gene, but I think that uh, he has already scheduled us. We play there this, this year, and we've played there in the past. So uh, if, if it seems to be good for the Goose to play there, it might be good for the Gander for them to return the game to us as well. I think it's good for college football in the region. Uh, we, we all know that there's a great professional uh, history to the Boston area and uh, not so much in support of college athletics, in all honesty. The more we can build these local rivalries, I think the more healthy it can be. Well, it seems to be in other sports. Uh, we play them in basketball. We play them in hockey in the same league. We play them in just about every other sport we have. So I don't know why that wouldn't hold true for football as well. I'm, I'm not following you, Steve. They play their home games at BC. We play our home games at, in Amherst. Uh, we've played BC at the Garden in basketball. Uh, I think there's some carryover there. But it's really a question you need to address to Gene. You know, if I was sitting in his chair, uh, they, don't, they don't have to schedule us, but I think it would be a, a good thing. I think it would stimulate uh, fan interest and, and rivalries and, uh, within the same households. And we can see over the years what happens in rivalries like Pitt, Penn State, or UCLA, USC. I think we have those same kind of opportunities, and I hope they would look at it the same way. Well, it's, it's 93 miles if in Palmer you take the left oh, instead of the sign that says take the right. <laughs> but we, we will do it as we have done last year for the UNH game. Uh, we, we, I think we had 26 bus loads that we put together for our students, and we will continue to provide that service to them. Uh, it can be a lot of fun on the buses for the students both ways as well. So uh, we're going to do everything we can logistically to make it uh, uh, accessible for them. Ron. I really haven't heard a lot of negative feedback to that effect. I'm sure there are some that, that, uh, that do feel that way, but uh, we need to look at the bigger picture. We need to look at where we want to take this program. We want to be able to reach out to a, a large alumni base that's within a half an hour of this tremendous facility. Um, with any change, you're not going to make everybody happy, but we think this, this is in the best interest of the, of the program overall. I'm going to take two more questions. Uh, Matt? Well, number one, uh, I would hope that the affiliation with us would help UMass to recruit athletes that they might not have been able to recruit before this because they'd be, pl be playing in a facility like this. And number two, to see them develop some championship teams. And, and really, uh, I, <clears throat> excuse me, I think um, Boston College and UConn have done a great job in their respective areas and continuing to build an interest in college football. I think that'll happen here. I think UMass is such a special academic institution and having, as I said, over 120,000 uh, graduates in their system, being able to tap into them and have them feel a connection through this sport, uh, that would be a win for us. Well, obviously, if if we attract crowds similar to what go to an NFL game, then that 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 would work out well for everybody, and that's why we're doing this to try to help UMass become uh, big time without the, without the university having to invest in the capital assets to be able to play big time. Here, they have a chance to do it and develop something that can be a great resource for the institution 
and take advantage of what we've already built. I think it's a win all around, and I, I know that college football fans in this region, we really would relish it. I think John can probably speak to that in more detail, but uh, they have to do with, um, obviously, attendance. They have to do with guarantee games that, uh, that you play. Um, those are two big factors. Obviously, we do get more revenues from the MAC than from the CAA. So, you know, we're doing things on a comparative basis, what things would look like in five years in the conference that, um, that, we're, that, that we're in and what things are going to look like in five years in, in the MAC. And, so doing that kind of a comparison, we feel that we will be um, contributing less from campus funds to, um, to athletics than we do now. John, he, he, deferred he, he deferred on it, but he hit the nail on the head. We, we need to sell tickets. We need to generate more income from, from sponsorships. And we need to schedule smart with our non-conference games and generate uh, uh, income revenue from guarantees. And those, those are really the primary uh, uh, new income sources that will make this fly. And we'll finish with Steve. You know, I, I hate to talk about other people's business. I, I think you should really talk to them about it. Um, this venue has always uh, been open. Uh, to anyone who wants to play big-time college football here, and I think that UMass has expressed the willingness, the commitment, and see it as something that is an asset for their um, university long-term, and so we're working in partnership with them to help build it. All right, Matt, we'll go one more with Matt, and then we're going to do the photo ops. I'll take that one, and uh, certainly it did. Uh, we know there was a certain novelty to that game because it was the first time ever. But uh, what it demonstrated is that, that you know the game did work. We were able to get students here. We got a great crowd. It was a great experience. Everybody that came uh, couldn't have been more complimentary about the facility and their experience. And that, that was a good indicator that if we do things the right way and we schedule the right way, that this can be successful. All right, we're going to do some photo opportunities out on the field, and then we'll be back in to do one-on-one -on -one interviews. Thank you very much. UMass has officially announced its move to the FBS level and the Mid-American Conference, and we've got lots more coming from Gillette Stadium. When we come back, we will talk with UMass head football coach Kevin Morris, and still to come, we hope to speak with many of the participants up there in the press conference on a one-on-one -on -one basis. So don't go away. Coverage from Gillette Stadium here in Foxborough continues coming up next on CBS 3 Now. Hi, I'm Gary Block, owner of Block Jewelry. We all know there's no easy fix for the current economy, but if you're looking for a diamond or a unique gift for someone special, we can fix that. If your favorite piece of jewelry is broken, or your diamond needs a new setting, we can also fix that. If your watch is right twice a day, we can fix that too. At Block Jewelry, we can't fix everything, but when it comes to jewelry, we can fix that. Block Jewelry, there's no better place. Good morning and thank you for calling Marcotte Board. We have a no pressure sales environment to help you find the right vehicle. It's knowing that you have loaner wheels when you need them. It's great service that's open late. Till midnight. We have a tradition of great deals. We, we got it here at Marcotte Ford. For over 45 years, we've been servicing customers throughout New England. Come to Marca and drive one today. In football, you've got to be prepared. Things can change fast on the field. 
It's the same thing in life. You never know what's coming next. I know from experience. That's why I've got life insurance from SBLI. My family's future is too important. Now we're ready for whatever comes our way. Affordable, dependable life insurance since 1907. The thing I like about UMass is that there's so many choices, so many options. It's incredible to be able to go to a school that is this diverse. To be able to put on my resume that I've done marketing for the show Glee and movies that have been number one at the box office. I came from Chicago to UMass for the sports management program because it's one of the top programs in the nation. And I love having a practical major where I can be at school and feel like I'm doing something. There's so much research going on here. There's lots of opportunity for undergraduate involvement in research that you don't get at a smaller institution. Dreams are forged. Character is tested. Teams are united. Champions win here. The road to the championship continues. Don't miss the 2011 NCAA Division I Men's Lacrosse Quarterfinals, May 22nd. For information, visit NCAA.com slash tickets. The second annual ESPNU Warrior Classic returns to East Hartford, Connecticut on Saturday, April 23rd. Don't miss this top-level lacrosse doubleheader. UMass is back in search of a repeat victory, but will lacrosse powerhouse Hofstra be too much to handle? Then, 10-time national champion Syracuse faces up-and-coming Big East rival Rutgers. Be there April 23rd at Rensselaer Field. Get your tickets now. Call 1-800-745-3000 or visit Ticketmaster.com today. Stadium. UMass has finished its press conference officially announcing the move to the FBS level and to the Mid-American Conference. But we've got lots coming up. We invite you to stay tuned. Starting now with our special interview with UMass head coach Kevin Morris. And coach, I wonder what your reaction is when you watch the press conference and hear all the exciting things that are going to happen for UMass football now in the coming years. Yeah, well, certainly prepped up a little bit, Josh, prior to today, but uh, very excited. It's a great move for UMass as a community and the football program in particular. So. Uh, it couldn't be a better day for UMass. It's been a long time coming, and, and here we are, headed to the show. So the coaches are excited. Have you talked to your team yet about this? And if you have, or maybe if you could just kind of gauge their attitude, how are they feeling about this move, the guys that are currently on the roster? No, very excited about it. We know we pre it a little bit back in the fall when the buzz got out, and then uh, now obviously we're going to have a team meeting tomorrow with uh, John McCutcheon's going to step in front of the squad and, and hit some of the details of the whole event. But uh, the kids are excited. Obviously, it's... Our kids want to play at the, at the highest level. That's why, you know, we go out to Michigan and play so well, you know, year in and year out against those, you know, Kansas State the year before that. So these guys are excited. They want to play at the highest level, and this offers them that opportunity week in, week out now. How does this move for your program impact your ability to recruit? Will it change the way that you go about recruiting athletes now being an FBS program? It, it'll change somewhat, Josh, but the, the basic formula will remain the same. You know, UMass is an easy sell. We get we get a great student population here at UMass, and it attracts a lot of great student athletes. And I think that'll that'll continue to be the same. You know, in terms of it, just the, the actual population will be smaller now because a Division One athlete, there's not as many going around. So the competitive level of the recruiting will, will certainly increase immediately. Did it help at all for this past recruiting class that you had to bring in? Because this hadn't been announced yet, but it had been rumored. How, how did that impact the 2011 signing class? Well, it helped us because there was some buzz about UMass out of the different high schools. Uh, as you, when we walked in, the first thing they said, hey, I heard you're going to Division One, and, yep. and that's certainly when the buzz is about your school, then you certainly can take advantage of it. And I think we got some great interest across the country because of that buzz. One of the aspects of making the transition from the FCS to the FBS level is the fact that you have a two-year transitional period. Next season will be your last in the CAA. 2012 will be your first in the MAC. And I, I wanted to ask you about next season in particular. It's a year that you won't be eligible for postseason play, but you'll play a full CAA schedule. How do you approach that as the coach? How do you approach that with your players? Well, we'll talk about that in detail tomorrow with the squad. But uh, we've got a lot of unfinished business you know, after last season in the CAA. And I think our guys are really excited about finishing you know the CAA tenure here in some real high fashion and the guys are excited about it they got a little bit of chip on their shoulder in the winter workouts and right through the spring right now so I think they're geared up to go into the CAA headstrong and ready to go in 2011. You know the 
the MAC is a conference that we're not very familiar with, at least head to head in our, our past history. But from what you've been able to see and learn about the conference, how would UMass fit competitively on the field? Well, again, we haven't played them directly, Josh, so it's all uh, he said, she said. But some of the coaches in the league that have coached in the, in the CAA and are now out in the MAC conference and doing really well there have said that, you know, we'll have a chance to come in and compete. Um, again, day in, day out, you got to show up and play. And as competitive as the CAA is, the MAC will certainly be that on, on their end. But I think UMass will step right in and be able to compete and then uh, obviously let the chips fly from there. But we got to be ready to go Saturday to Saturday, and I think we will be. And I imagine this is something that, it's not just popping onto your plate today. This is something that you and your coaching staff have been thinking about for several months now, correct? Well, I mean, since the buzz came out, and uh, you know, certainly you're excited about it. But our, our thoughts have been, hey, it's CAA, and let's let's finish the deal here. So our, our focus has just been that. Now the, the announcement's been made. And there's a lot of excitement for the MAC, and and we're excited about it as well. But that's 2012. Right. Now, as a football coach and as a staff, right now it's 2011 season. We're finishing up spring ball. April 30th at 4 p.m. at McGurk, and we're really excited about that venue. And uh, we'll finish that up strong and then get ready for the CAA in the fall. Well, I wanted to ask you about spring practice because, as you said, you're getting to the latter stages of it, getting ready for the spring game. How, how have things gone with your guys on the field? Well, it's gone very well. we got a, another young group coming in this year, but uh, I think a pretty exciting group. Tyler Holmes on defense is doing a great job right now. Julian Talley on offense has won three MVPs in a row for us in our practice situations, and the quarterbacks are really coming on. We're young at quarterback. Everyone wants to talk quarterback, but I think the young quarterbacks, they're standing in the pocket well and making some good downfield throws. So excited about the spring, really excited about the spring game and the finish and see how we execute. 4 o'clock on April 30th. That's just a couple of weeks away. It's right around the corner, Josh, and uh, we got uh, three practices till then to really get it honed in and, and get ready for CAA in the fall, as well as Boston College, Central Connecticut, and we open Holy Cross on a Thursday night, which will be a great venue out there. They're going to bring in lights, and uh, so we'll kick the season off with a big bang in the state, in Worcester, and then take it from there in the CAA. Thursday night, September the 1st, opening night under the lights, and thank you so much for spending some time with us here. I know it's an exciting day, and we appreciate you sharing some of it with us here. Uh, you bet, Josh. Look forward to it, and thanks again for your support. All right, that's UMass football coach Kevin Morris. We'll be back. Lots more still to come from Gillette, so keep it right here. The UMass Amherst Alumni Association is over 225,000 alumni strong. Our vibrant community participates in professional development programs, alumni clubs, athletic, and other events around the globe. Explore the traditions, resources, and opportunities that are your UMass Amherst Alumni Association. Get connected today. You are! You are! You We got the king, we got the queen, we do the discount thing. You got the bond, you got the big red bond. You got the discount price and it feels so nice. Buy the betting bond near you. At Clark Paint Factory, paint is our only business, and that's why contractors and homeowners choose Clark. From America's leading brands to our own brand, find what you're looking for or have it perfectly matched. Clark Paint Factory, proudly serving New England since 1928. Dreams are forged. Character is tested. Teams are united. Champions win here. The road to the championship continues. Don't miss the 2011 NCAA Division I Men's Lacrosse Quarterfinals, May 22nd. For information, visit NCAA.com slash tickets. The American Inn provides a lifestyle that enables people to relax and enjoy their life. People can participate as much or as little as they choose. You know, 55 is the new 30. We just fell in love with it and we thought, well, why should we stay in our great big old house that needs so much care? So this has been wonderful. It's just a very vibrant, active group of people who are willing to try new things. This lifestyle gives them that opportunity. This is the way to go. If you're over 55. In football, you've got to be prepared. Things can change fast on the field. It's the same thing in life. You never know what's coming next. I know from experience. That's why I've got life insurance from SBLI. My family's future is too important. Now we're ready for whatever comes our way. Affordable, dependable life insurance since 1907. 
Gillette Stadium media room emptied out now. In fact, the participants in the press conference are out on the field taking some photo opportunities as we continue our coverage live here on the UMass Sports Network. Well, the Minutemen had seven players from its alumni base active in the National Football League a year ago. They're hoping to get some more into the NFL draft coming up at the end of the month. Let's take a look at what happened when the scouts came to take a look at last year's senior class at UMass's Pro Day. It was definitely cold, that's that's for sure, you know. But no, overall, it wasn't a bad day. We had a good amount of scouts here, you know, for you know what we liked, a little bit more than we actually anticipated. And, uh, you know, for me, from an individual standpoint, I think I did, you know, pretty good, especially in the position work. But um, it definitely wasn't the best day. It's a little windy and a little cold, you know, typical New England day. So, you know, if we could have had a little bit better weather, that would have been nice. But considering what we had, you know, I think overall as a group, all the UMass guys, we did pretty well today. Uh, you know, it went real well. I think I uh, improved on my 40 time. Uh, Came up short on a couple balls. Wasn't really uh, too sure with all the receivers, but I think I put the balls where they need to be. They just weren't completions. Um, I think it was well. I think I did good. Uh, really good, man. I felt like I had a really strong day following up from BC the other day. Uh, I felt like I ran fast, it was quick, and uh, position drills were just where I wanted them to be. Uh, it went pretty well. Um, honestly, I didn't do much because I basically just had a full workout over at BC only two days ago, less, less than two days ago. So basically, I just came out here and just um, did a couple of the drills over again, see if I can get a little better times. But I was happy with the way it went. Tell me what you've been working on leading up to these days. Uh, you just work on all the drills, you know, all the specific drills, the L drill, the, the shuttle, the 40-yard dash, you know, and definitely strength and everything like that. So you just, it's a little bit of different training, you know. It's, it's actually not even football specific at all, you know. It's all just for the drills themselves. Are these days nerve-wracking? A little bit, man, but you try to come out here and just have fun, you know what I mean? So I came out here, tried to have fun with the guys, see all the football team again, so it wasn't that nerve-wracking. It's kind of cool making the circuit, going around the different pro days, probably seeing yeah. the same guys. Uh, yeah, it is kind of cool. It's a little tiring. You know, I'm glad it's over. It's behind me, so now it's just a waiting game. Yeah. What's the process been like as you do workouts to get ready for this and then as you go through it? What's it been like? Working out, eating, sleeping, working out, eating, sleeping. I mean, it's, that's basically it. It's kind of like a lifestyle now, man. So for me to come here and put it all on the line is good that it paid off. What's it been like going through this process? Um, it's exciting, uh, a little nerve-wracking, but... Uh, you know, I kind of just figure it is what it is at this point. Um, I, I, I am the quarterback that I am, so if they like me, they like me. If not, then that's just the way it's going to go. How many of these have you been to? Uh, this is my second. Uh, I did Boston College on Wednesday, and then uh, I'm actually going to have uh, a workout in California, and then I have a workout set up with the 49ers already. How does a pro day differ for a lineman as opposed to a skill position guy? Well, I mean, all those, the 49ers. You're not running routes? <laughs> I'm not running routes. I'm not catching balls, and the 40-yard dash probably doesn't matter too much for me in a game. But I still want you to do it just to get that even benchmark for all the players out there that are coming out. So you got to do it and just do your best that you can. Do you get feedback from scouts, from people who watch it? Do, do they tell you stuff after you go through a day like this? You well at the BC day, or actually today, you know they really don't tell you your times. You have to you know ask them uh, at a later date. Um, they're kind of like secretive about it, kind of about your times. <laughs> but uh, as far as, um, you know, after, after you run the drills and stuff, you know, scouts come up to you and say that they're interested and they'll, they'll talk to you and, you know, tell them your thoughts about you and uh, just make sure that they're interested so you know. So that was UMass Football Pro Day a couple of weeks back. We're back live at Gillette Stadium and happy to be joined by UMass Chancellor Robert Holubin. I wonder, if, as UMass fans watch this today, I'm, I'm sure many are thinking this has been decades and decades in the making, and some who thought maybe they'd never see this in their lifetime. So now the time has come to make the move. How did this all come together? Well, I think it came together because it was an opportunity for us. Um, there was the somewhat negative opportunity, I guess, of the uh, CAA in the north and the teams that left the CAA and the teams that may be leaving. Um, that left us with um, a situation where we were looking at what we should do um, um, in order to solidify our, our football program. And uh, it was in that context, in the context of um, having the opportunity to deal with the crafts, that we thought that we could do something. So uh, it really was, and, and, and the MAC, of course, uh, that, um, you know, the conference that John uh, McCutcheon worked with. Uh, and got in touch with and that extended us an invitation. So these things have to, had to all fall into place at one time. So um, I don't know what's happened in previous decades because this is my third year here. 
Uh, and, uh, but, but I did see an opportunity for us, and I thought it was something that we should uh, investigate. And it turns out that we've seized that opportunity, and we're very happy about it. You talk about your third year here, and for those who don't know, you've spent some time at universities that have major FBS programs, University of Tennessee, Cal Berkeley. I wonder, does having experienced what it can be like at that level, did that kind of emphasize your, your will to, to make this happen here at UMass? Well, there's some positive and negatives about, um, about programs in, in, in colleges at that level, and uh, I think that um, we want to do it the right way here at, um, at UMass. Uh, we have to avoid some of the pitfalls of some of the programs, and we can see from the example of Ohio State that uh, even the best programs are subject to those pitfalls. So um, it's not all a positive or a negative uh, experience when you've been at an, at an FBS can, uh, campus. And um, Cal also had some sanctions against it, and I knew about them and was involved with various committees. Uh, so there's a lot of excitement and a lot of positive, but there are some, um, some dangers and things that you have to watch out for. But uh, I don't think that my previous experience really led me to, um, to push in this direction. I think it was really more the opportunity that we had, uh, the uh, situation with the CAA, and the fact that as the, um, the flagship institution in the state, we felt that we have to do something that represents the entire state. And that's, um, that, th those were really the, um, the, the motivating features rather than, I think, my own past experience. Let me follow up on that, if, if I might. You've said earlier today at the press conference that one of the main reasons to make this move is because it's consistent with the university's mission as the flagship campus. For the, for the state system. Kind of explain that, if you would. What, what is that mission, and how does this help further that? Well, the, the flagship institutions in other states, if you look at the, at the great states in the Midwest, uh, or in the, um, in, in the South, or um, in, in, the, in, in the far west in California, you see that those uh, institutions that are flagship institutions represent something for the state. And the reason that they represent something for the state has to do with their status. And football isn't the only thing, and certainly I'm not someone who thinks football uh, establishes your status as a, a, as a flagship institution or as a bona fide in institution, but it is one piece in the puzzle of what good flagship campuses do and the profile of really good flagship campuses in other states, and it's something that, frankly, we should be doing too. Short term, what do you see this move in football doing for the Amherst campus as a whole? Well, I think it'll attract more alums uh, back to the campus and engage them more in, in the campus, and I think that that'll be, a, a, that'll be a big positive for us. It will give us more exposure uh, throughout the state, uh, and that's going to be good for us as well. So I see those as, the, um, as, as, as really the short-term um, objectives of this move. How about long-term? Do you see this program in football growing the university over the next few decades? Well, I don't think a program in football ever grows a university. Uh, we have our own goals for what the university is going to do and what we're doing academically. But I do see this as part of the uh, long-term vision for uh, solidifying our role as the uh, flagship for the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. And I think that, uh, that, th that this will become part of that. I, you know, I might mention that we also play other sports in this part of the state. We've played uh, basketball games here the last few years. Uh, if the opportunity arises, we'll probably, we'd probably like to play a hockey game here as well. Uh, so we, we, we have to profile ourselves on the campus a as the flagship for the entire state. And that means not giving up Amherst, but expanding out and doing things, not only in athletics, but in other areas uh, throughout, the, throughout the state of Massachusetts. Chancellor Holub, we appreciate your time and your candor here. Congratulations on the move, and we look forward Thank to speaking you, with you again soon. Thanks so much. UMass Amherst Chancellor Robert Holub will be back to Gillette Stadium. Lots more still to come, interviews and more, so keep it right here. The second annual ESPNU Warrior Classic returns to East Hartford, Connecticut on Saturday, April 23rd. Don't miss this top-level lacrosse doubleheader. UMass is back in search of a repeat victory, but will lacrosse powerhouse Hofstra be too much to handle? Then, 10-time national champion Syracuse faces up-and-coming Big East rival Rutgers. Be there April 23rd at Rensselaer Field. Get your tickets now. Call 1-800-745-3000 or visit Ticketmaster.com today. 
The UMass Amherst Alumni Association is over 225,000 alumni strong. Our vibrant community participates in professional development programs, alumni clubs, athletic, and other events around the globe. Explore the traditions, resources, and opportunities that are your UMass Amherst Alumni Association. Get connected today. You are! You are! You are. Dreams are forged. Character is tested. Teams are united. Champions win here. The road to the championship continues. Don't miss the 2011 NCAA Division I Men's Lacrosse Quarterfinals, May 22nd. For information, visit NCAA.com slash tickets. The thing I like about UMass is that there's so many choices, so many options. It's incredible to be able to go to a school that is this diverse. To be able to put on my resume that I've done marketing for the show Glee and movies that have been number one at the box office. I came from Chicago to UMass for the sports management program because it's one of the top programs in the nation. And I love having a practical major where I can be at school and feel like I'm doing something. There's so much research going on here. There's lots of opportunity for undergraduate involvement in research that you don't get at a smaller institution. Hi, I'm Gary Block, owner of Block Jewelry. We all know there's no easy fix for the current economy, but if you're looking for a diamond or a unique gift for someone special, we can fix that. If your favorite piece of jewelry is broken or your diamond needs a new setting, we can also fix that. If your watch is right twice a day, we can fix that too. At Block Jewelry, we can't fix everything, but when it comes to jewelry, we can fix that. Block Jewelry, there's no better place. Welcome you back here. Empty inside the media room at Gillette Stadium at the moment, but the press conference, which completed about a half an hour ago, UMass announcing its move up to the FBS level in football and to the MAC conference. And speaking of the MAC, we welcome John Steinbrecher, the commissioner of the conference. We thank you for coming by. Why was UMass selected as a good fit for your league? Well, I guess there's a lot of reasons. I've been on board with the conference almost two years now, and, and really at every meeting with our presidents and ADs since I've uh, been with the conference we've talked membership and tried to examine what our strengths what our needs were and it really came out of last our meetings last spring with uh, the directive to really look at the landscape look at who's out there and see if there are some good fits and we look all sorts of places and the more we looked at the University of Massachusetts Amherst and we zeroed in on a couple of things, and it really starts with first academic profile of the institution. Starts there. If it, if we don't get past that, it doesn't go any further. And I think people really need to understand that. That was really an important component. And obviously, great. It's one of the best public institutions, one of the best institutions in the country. So that you know, we got through that very well. The leadership of the institution, outstanding, and we, we really appreciated the vision they had. And then you start working through the athletic part of it. Uh, looking hard at football, looking at the infrastructure, uh, at what they've done and what the possibilities could be, and you start matching that up, and you say, hmm, there are some really good possibilities here. And so uh, we think it's it, it really makes a nice marriage. I think with the tie-in, particularly we've got another football only a, a member, Temple University. Mm -hmm. It's already a built-in rival for UMass. I think that, that that's going to help in this transition and, and, and help UMass really get brought into the conference very, very quickly. Um, and it really doesn't stretch our footprint all that much. You know, we, we, we go from Chicago now to to the to Atlantic seaboard. Still, in terms of FBS conferences, we're probably about as tight geographically as there is. So uh, the travel really wasn't, yeah, you look at it, it wasn't a big issue in this case. Competitively on the field, from what you've gathered and I'm sure you've gathered a lot of information. How does the UMass football program look against the programs already existing in the MAC? Yeah, well, there's some growing they need to do, and they know it, and that's natural. Uh, they'll be recruiting a little different 
student athlete. Hopefully they get a little bigger, a little faster, some of those things, although they've got a very fine team as it is. And you've seen as they've played FBS teams in past years, they've been very, very competitive more often than not. Um, I quite frankly expect them to come in and, and become competitive in, in short order. You look at our league, and we are – we are really a competitive league top to bottom. The past three years, 10 of our 13 institutions have gone to bowl games. Uh, we've not had one team run away for five years and you know go 12-0 and 0 through the league like a couple of leagues have done. And that's, uh, that's a good thing and a bad thing in, in some ways. So I expect UMass to come in and in short order be fighting for bowl slots, be fighting for conference championships. I know the UMass fans watching are certainly hoping that this is the facility that, at least in 2012 and 2013, the first two seasons that UMass is a member of the MAC, Gillette Stadium is where the home games are going to be played. Mm -hmm. How does the MAC look at this as a home facility? Do they want this to continue? Would you like to eventually see things move back towards McGurk Stadium in Amherst? Mm -hmm. Well, we're excited to be able to come into the Boston marketplace and certainly to play in a facility as fine as this is exciting. Our student athletes, I think, uh, what a unique opportunity. You know, we play in a pro stadium when we play in Philadelphia. Mm -hmm. our, our conference championship game is in Ford Field in Detroit. And now with UMass, we have possibly could play in three pro stadiums in, in a single year, depending on how your schedule feels. As they take care of some things on campus, I think we end up with the best of both worlds. We have a chance to play here for some games, and probably maybe there's a game or two a year we play back in Amherst. I think both will be just outstanding. Commissioner, if you would, explain for the fans the basketball part of this agreement. Temple and UMass, now as football members, will be playing men's and women's basketball non-conference games, four games a year, I believe it is. Correct. Why was that important to the conference to extend that to UMass? And, and to explain it further, it's two home and two away a year. Well, I think it continues to build relationships. Uh, we wanted to, to engage in some other sports, and basketball seemed like a natural place to do that. We've been doing that with Temple. I think it's, again, it, it helps build those rivalries, build those relationships. Uh, those are the two high-profile sports we both have. And so where we can build those ties, I think we, we try to take advantage of those things. What deliberations were made, either pro or con? When you start looking at UMass, what really stuck out as a positive? What things maybe did you think, uh, maybe this isn't a good fit? How, how hard yeah. were those deliberations? What were they when you looked at it? Well, and this was a... Talk about deliberations. We've been very deliberate. I think some people want these things to happen immediately. And this has really been a about a nine-month process, and that's probably the right thing. This is, I, I, I kind of relate this to it's a courtship because you're, what, ultimately you're trying to, to build a good marriage, and so you're dating for a while, <laughs> and you really need to get to know each other and ask all the questions and share all the information because you don't want any surprises. And so we've done that, and we've taken the time, and where questions have arisen, we've, we've, we've tried to answer it on both ends. And I think where we came out is we really like each other and expect us to be a long-term, strong marriage. Marriage. Commissioner, thanks so much for the time. We're so happy to be involved with the conference, and we look forward to some great, great play on the field. Welcome to the Mid-American Conference. Thank you so much. All right, we're going to be back with UMass Director of Athletics, John McCutcheon. So keep it right here. The American Inn provides a lifestyle that enables people to relax and enjoy their life. People can participate as much or as little as they choose. You know, 55 is the new 30. We just fell in love with it, and we thought, well, why should we stay in our great big old house that needs so much care? So this has been wonderful. It's just a very vibrant, active group of people who are willing to try new things. This lifestyle gives them that opportunity. This is the way to go. You're over 55. Great balls of fire! You got the man, you got the man, you got the bidding man. We got the king, we got the queen, we do the discount thing. You got the man, you got the big red bond. You got the discount price that feels so nice. Fire the bidding man, near you! At Clark Paint Factory, paint is our only business, and that's why contractors and homeowners choose Clark. From America's leading brands to our own brand, find what you're looking for or have it perfectly matched. Clark Paint Factory, proudly serving New England since 1928. Motorcycle tip number one. Take a motorcycle training course. The Registry's motorcycle program offers a basic and experienced rider course. Graduates can get their motorcycle license along with a limited 10% discount on motorcycle insurance. The more you know, the better it gets.
Back at Gillette Stadium, UMass has announced its football move to the FBS level, and we're happy to have Athletic Director John McCutcheon. How difficult was this to pull off? We've talked with several other guests about the time frame. You've been so involved with the inner workings. How hard was this really to do? Well, I don't know if I've thought of it in terms of how difficult it was. It was time consuming, for sure. Uh, when the chancellor some nine months ago gave me directive to, to look into the possibilities, it's been a whirlwind since then. And as situations developed uh, with the MAC conference, uh, really focusing that uh, analysis of our transition, the conversations with the conference, the conversations with Gillette Stadium, uh, it really didn't leave a whole lot of time to think about what, how hard it was. It was, it was exciting uh, because as things started to, to crystallize that this actually could happen, uh, there was an energy that came along with that that really was uh, uh, real, uh, a work of joy, not really a, 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 a labor. That's you know, interesting. As I listen to you answer that question, it pops into mind. It, this was a sort of secret initiative for a long time. How many people were involved initially, and how, how was this kept under wraps for so long? Well, it started with the chancellor and myself, and then we uh, had a small group of uh, an administrative group on campus uh, that I consulted with as we worked our way along. But it's really not a process that can be conducted in the public forum. Uh, there are too many variables. There are too many uh, pieces of misinformation or uh, opportunities that may or may not pan out. Uh, that if they're if they're just presented publicly just uh, makes the process that much more difficult to pursue so uh, we did have to hold our cards a little bit close to our vest uh, I think that worked to our best interest um, but uh, that's how it went when you start paring it down and looking at different potential conferences how did it come that the Mac was selected as the best fit for your school well, I don't, I don't know if you can use the word selection, but uh, you know we explored all the opportunities that were out there. And, and as we continued our conversations with the MAC, uh, we realized that there was a great opportunity there, and it presented itself to us and, and developed into something that was what we uh, are realizing today. So we're excited about it. We think we can be uh, successful in the MAC. We think we can be contributing members to the rest of the conference and, and help bring more exposure to the to the conference in the East Coast and in our media markets. So. Uh, we're, we're excited about the relationship. One thing that I think hasn't been discussed all that much here this afternoon is the impact on the rest of the athletic department. And I know you've made a point of saying there will be no cuts, either financially or to a sport, and also that this should, at least theoretically, really enhance some of the women's teams on campus. Is that correct? Well, absolutely. There will be new scholarship resources provided to some of our women's teams. Uh, but a premise that we, we held true to in the evaluation of this transition was that it had to make financial sense uh, for football, but also at, not at the cost of the rest of our programs. Uh, we think that the revenue potential uh, at this level and in the MAC is such that it can, it can support, if not reduce, the amount of, of institutional aid uh, that we have to provide uh, resource-wise uh, to support the operating budget. There's a lot of people that for years have said UMass is a basketball school. Does this at all impact the men's basketball program? Well, we are a basketball school, but now we're also a football school. Uh, there's nothing that says you can't be both, and along with it, a hockey school, a soccer school, a, a softball school, and all the rest of our 21 programs. Uh, I don't think you have to have one particular program. I think you want to have success in just about everything you endeavor to do, and that's what we're trying to do. When you talk to fans who live out in Western Mass, as many I'm sure are watching right now, how do you tell them that this, making the commute out to Gillette Stadium for games at least 2012 and 2013, how do you tell them that this is the best thing to do? Well, they'll have to make those decisions for themselves, but you know, we appreciate the support we've had from our, our longtime season ticket holders over the years. Uh, we couldn't be more appreciative of it. We're going to do some things for them to recognize that in terms of giving them priority for seat selection, guaranteed access to those seat seats. We know it's going to be harder for them because of the distance. Uh, we wish we could make everybody happy in a process like this, but, but unfortunately that's just not possible. Uh, and as we look forward, the fact that we can bring UMass football in our presence to within a uh, half an hour drive of over 120,000 of our alumni that do live in the eastern part of the state uh, is just something we couldn't pass up. How big of a proponent was Robert Kraft and the entire Kraft group to getting UMass to the FBS level and then getting a deal done to play games at this stadium? Well, they were extremely supportive. Uh, his staff, we worked with 
uh, tirelessly over the past two months putting the deal together. Uh, I think he has a, he, obviously he's a visionary. Uh, the fact that he put this complex together and the entertainment amenities that go along with it, the restaurants, the shopping malls, all those kind of things, it make it one of the most unique sporting venues in the entire country. And to have the opportunity to use it as your home facility is really unprecedented. Uh, and, and in a fin financial structure, that is extremely beneficial to UMass and our growth with, with uh, FBS football. It, se it seems to me, I don't know, correct me if I'm wrong, it would have been very difficult to get this done without Mr. Kraft's help? It would not have happened, I'll tell you that right now. Um, without the opportunity to play here in Gillette Stadium, uh, the prospect of, of trying to build a two or three hundred million dollar stadium uh, to get this off the ground, and that's about what it would cost in today's dollars, would just have made it prohibitive. Thank you so much for the time, John. Appreciate it. Congratulations on a banner day for the entire University of Massachusetts. Thank you. All right, we're going to step aside. More coverage from Gillette Stadium when we come back. The American Inn provides a lifestyle that enables people to relax and enjoy their life. People can participate as much or as little as they choose. You know, 55 is the new 30. We just fell in love with it and we thought, well, why should we stay in our great big old house that needs so much care? So this has been wonderful. It's just a very vibrant, active group of people who are willing to try new things. This lifestyle gives them that opportunity. This is the way to go. If you're over 55. Good morning and thank you for calling Marcot Ford. We have a no pressure sales environment to help you find the right vehicle. It's knowing that you have loaner wheels when you need them. It's great service that's open late. Till midnight. We have a tradition of great deals. We got it here at Marcot Ford. For over 45 years we've been servicing customers throughout New England. Come to Marca and drive one today. Hi, I'm Gary Block, owner of Block Jewelry. We all know there's no easy fix for the current economy, but if you're looking for a diamond or a unique gift for someone special, we can fix that. If your favorite piece of jewelry is broken or your diamond needs a new setting, we can also fix that. If your watch is right twice a day, we can fix that too. At Block Jewelry, we can't fix everything, but when it comes to jewelry, we can fix that. Block Jewelry, there's no better place. Dreams are forged. Character is tested. Teams are united. Champions win here. The road to the championship continues. Don't miss the 2011 NCAA Division I Men's Lacrosse Quarterfinals, May 22nd. For information, visit NCAA.com slash tickets. The second annual ESPNU Warrior Classic returns to East Hartford, Connecticut on Saturday, April 23rd. Don't miss this top-level lacrosse doubleheader. UMass is back in search of a repeat victory, but will lacrosse powerhouse Hofstra be too much to handle? Then, 10-time national champion Syracuse faces up-and-coming Big East rival Rutgers. Be there April 23rd at Rensselaer Field. Get your tickets now. Call 1-800-745-3000 or visit Ticketmaster.com today. Welcome you back to Gillette Stadium. UMass announcing the move today to the FBS level in football and to the Mid-American Conference. And James Karam, who is the head of the Board of Trustees, is so gracious enough to join us. Why did the board feel that this was a move that benefits the, the entire system? You know, I've been asked that question about 10 times today, and there are so many facets to this. It's a difficult question to answer in one sentence. But First of all, when you look at the sports program, there was a great opportunity as a result of um, opening discussions with the Kraft family uh, to leverage this stadium and give UMass the opportunity to, uh, you know, to really step up big time on, on national sports. And um, we thought it did a number of things. First of all, as, as a trustee, my first responsibility is uh, to the finances and, and maintaining the integrity of the school. And, we really saw that even with modest projections that, that we could substantially lower the athletic cost and, and create a much uh, higher impact for our students in terms of uh, 
you know, participating in a sports program of this nature. And then when you put it on this venue with this stadium, and you've obviously looked around the stadium, it's not a stadium, it's a destination. I mean, when you look in the parking lots with the hotels and the restaurants and the shopping and the various venues of entertainment, I mean, it's an opportunity for our students to come here, see a national big time program, uh, in, enjoy the festivities. It's also at a location that we believe will galvanize our alumni. We have about 150,000 alumni in, in the eastern half of the state. Um, we, we've got the media sources here. We think that we can leverage this sports program to improve our academic standards like a lot of universities have done across the country, including places like BC and Notre Dame. And I'm not saying we're going to be a BC and Notre Dame overnight. But obviously it's proven that you know students who get the full impact of what they're looking for in terms of athletics are more interested in applying to an institution. And we think that you know it will substantially increase applications and the quality of the students coming to the university. Let me follow up on that if I might. Obviously it's a controversial topic. Do you have sports? Do you spend more money on sports to improve academics? But how much of a selling point was it for the board to say that if you go to the highest level of football, you can then get maybe more and higher level applicants. Well, I, I, I think it's been proven. I mean, if you look at look across the border, very close to Amherst, if you look at UConn, if you, again, you look at BC, you look at other schools around the country, they've leveraged sports to improve the academics. I think that formula does work. I think you have to be careful. You have to be prudent. You have to do your due diligence. I think we've done that. We've got, as you know, one of the oldest sports management programs in the country. We've used those resources at, at the campus to help analyze this we brought in an outside consultant a national expert on on uh, the business of sports and in, in, in uh, higher education who assisted us in the negotiations in our performers we think we've been very diligent we think we've been very conservative and we think you know this will be a win-win situation a win in terms of our finances and a win in terms of the uh, the impact it will have on the campus and the experience our students will have of course the amherst campus is just a part of the university system but it's the flagship campus one of the things that's been said today is that moving to the FBS level in football for UMass Amherst is consistent with the university's mission as the flagship. What, what does that mean as you see it? Well, I, I think what we, what we strive to be is excellent in, in everything we do. I think we, you know, especially, I mean, we, we're, we're talking about it right now quite often, you know, because of the, you know, tough economic, economic times, we're, we're facing budget cuts. And, and we talk about even when we have budget cuts that we've got to do it strategically. We don't want to keep cutting 5%, 5% across the board because what we're going to end up is mediocre programs across the board. So we've got to cut strategically. And when we make investments like this, we've got to invest strategically. So I, I think I think you know going into the FBS program gives us an opportunity to, to, to raise our game, to raise the uh, awareness, to raise the visibility, to really raise the brand of UMass to, uh, to another level, and, and we've got to leverage that, as I said, uh, for the main purpose of our mission, which is which is academics and you know improving the economic and social well-being of, of our students and our citizens in the state. Mr. Karam, thanks so much for your thank time. Thank you. Appreciate you coming over and joining Good. us today. Thank you. All right, Jim Karam, maybe. Thank you. For the Board of Trustees, and we take a break. We'll wrap up our coverage from Gillette Stadium. Don't go away. You're watching the UMass FBS announcement here on CBS 3 now. Good morning, and thank you for calling Marcotte Board. We have a no-pressure sales environment to help you find the right vehicle. It's knowing that you have loaner wheels when you need them. It's great service that's open late. Till midnight. We have a tradition of great deals. We got it here at Marcotte Ford. For over 45 years, we've been servicing customers throughout New England. Come to Marca and drive one today. Hi, I'm Gary Block, owner of Block Jewelry. We all know there's no easy fix for the current economy, but if you're looking for a diamond or a unique gift for someone special, we can fix that. If your favorite piece of jewelry is broken or your diamond needs a new setting, we can also fix that. If your watch is right twice a day, we can fix that too. At Block Jewelry, we can't fix everything, but when it comes to jewelry, we can fix that. Block Jewelry, there's no better place. The American Inn provides a lifestyle that enables people to relax and enjoy their life. People can participate as much or as little as they choose. You know, 55 is the new 30. We just fell in love with it, and we thought, well, why should we stay in our great big old house that needs so much care? So this has been wonderful. 
It's just a very vibrant, active group of people who are willing to try new things. This lifestyle gives them that opportunity. This is the way to go. If you're over 55. Phil Buttafuoco joins us from the Patriots here at Gillette Stadium where UMass has announced that starting in 2012, they'll be playing their home games here in Foxborough. Why, Phil, was this such an important thing for the Kraft Group? Well, I think the, you know, Mr. Kraft said it earlier today in that it's really important to the Kraft family and certainly the New England Patriots to help the growth of football here in New England. And whether it's at the youth level, the high school level, the college level, uh, and certainly the expanse of the, the professional level uh, is very important to the Kraft family. And, and the, uh, we've had the high school Super Bowls here now for a number of years, and, and that's very successful. And we've had more and more Pop Warner uh, activity here at the stadium to help grow the, the grassroots of the game. But we saw last year with the Colonial Clash how successful college football can be here, uh, even at, at the FCS level. Uh, with UMass and UNH, and, and this is certainly a, a great opportunity for the Crafts to continue their support of the growth of football here in New England as we go forward. From someone who works here, what does having a full-time college football schedule do for this facility? Well, I think it's really exciting uh, to, to involve UMass and, uh, and other institutions from around the country uh, here at, at uh, Gillette Stadium and certainly Patriot Place. Uh, it's a great opportunity for Gillette Stadium, Patriot Place, to be exposed to the UMass uh, community, whether it's the alumni, the students, the faculty, staff, and prospective students as well, and an opportunity to develop a relationship that helps UMass grow as, a, as an institution, as an athletic department, and certainly as a football program now. But uh, we're looking forward to a, a terrific partnership. Uh, but one that op it provides us the opportunity to engage a, a new community here at Gillette Stadium and Patriot Place. You know, Phil, in talking to, to people here from both the Patriots side and from the UMass side, this seems on paper to be a pretty mutually beneficial partnership. I, I wonder, how, how did this partnership come about? Well, it is it is very mutually beneficial. There's no question about that. And and again, we're trying we not only benefit from each other, but we want to support each other in in, in each other's visions uh, as we move forward. And I think really the the idea of of UMass moving up to FBS or or 1A football, you know, really established uh, years ago uh, as UMass evaluated a couple of times beforehand. Uh, so it, in that regard, it it had already been out. Uh, uh, in, in the open to a degree. Uh, but I think the UMass folks really were taking a look at how do we move forward as an in institution and move where we want to be academically and also athletically. And the, the FBS was uh, really the answer to their, uh, to their analysis. And then here, after we saw the Colonial Clash success, uh, it was a great opportunity to use as uh, the assets that the Crafts have built here uh, to help UMass, and it's an endeavor here with uh, FBS football. The Colonial Clash had 33,000 fans <clears throat> in 2010. There will be a second one in 2011. That plans already in progress for that game, I imagine. They are. Both institutions are extremely excited about that this year, and, and I think all of the alumni that were here last year for both schools saw the opportunities, uh, and, and the feedback has been tremendously positive. So we're looking forward to a another great Colonial Clash here October. Uh, and both institutions will be selling tickets uh, very shortly for that, and we'll be working with all their constituents to, to have another great experience here at Gillette Stadium. Well, one game in 2011, and then you move it significantly forward in 2012 and beyond. We're looking forward to help, uh, help you put college football into the Boston area. So thank you so much for coming over to join us today, Phil, and we appreciate the time. You're more than welcome. Thank you. Look forward to the relationship. A final break here from Gillette, and we'll be back. Don't go away. You're watching the UMass football announcement on CBS 3 now. The thing I like about UMass is that there's so many choices, so many options. It's incredible to be able to go to a school that is this diverse. To be able to put on my resume that I've done marketing for the show Glee and movies that have been number one at the box office. I came from Chicago to UMass for the sports management program because it's one of the top programs in the nation. And I love having a practical major where I can be at school and feel like I'm doing something. There's so much research going on here. There's lots of opportunity for undergraduate involvement in research that you don't get at a smaller institution. Dreams are forged. Character is tested. 
Teams are united. Champions win here. The road to the championship continues. Don't miss the 2011 NCAA Division I Men's Lacrosse Quarterfinals, May 22nd. For information, visit NCAA.com slash tickets. The second annual ESPNU Warrior Classic returns to East Hartford, Connecticut on Saturday, April 23rd. Don't miss this top-level lacrosse doubleheader. UMass is back in search of a repeat victory, but will lacrosse powerhouse Hofstra be too much to handle? Then, 10-time national champion Syracuse faces up-and-coming Big East rival Rutgers. Be there April 23rd at Rensselaer Field. Get your tickets now. Call 1-800-745-3000 or visit Ticketmaster.com today. So we are just about finished for the afternoon here in Foxborough. UMass, again, the headline will be moving to the FBS level. That's formerly known as 1A, the highest level of college football. And they'll be participating in the Mid-American Conference beginning in 2012. I'd like to thank our producer and director here today, as always, Sean McCluskey, with a great job bringing you the pictures. And we thank you for tuning in to watch this historic announcement for the UMass Athletic Department and the university system as a whole. I'm Josh Maurer. Thanks so much for tuning in. We look forward to speaking to you again very shortly. So long. The UMass Amherst Alumni Association is over 225,000 alumni strong. Our vibrant community participates in professional development programs, alumni clubs, athletic, and other events around the globe. Explore the traditions, resources, and opportunities that are your UMass Amherst Alumni Association. Get connected today. You are! You are! You the thing I like about UMass is that there's so many choices, so many options. It's incredible to be able to go to a school that is this diverse. To be able to put on my resume that I've done marketing for the show Glee and movies that have been number one at the box office. I came from Chicago to UMass for the sports management program because it's one of the top programs in the nation. And I love having a practical major where I can be at school and feel like I'm doing something. There's so much research going on here. There's lots of opportunity for undergraduate involvement in research that you don't get at a smaller institution. In football, you've got to be prepared. Things can change fast on the field. It's the same thing in life. You never know what's coming next. I know from experience. That's why I've got life insurance from SBLI. My family's future is too important. Now we're ready for whatever comes our way. Affordable, dependable life insurance since 1907. Dreams are forged. Character is tested. Teams are united. Champions win here. The road to the championship continues. Don't miss the 2011 NCAA Division I Men's Lacrosse Quarterfinals, May 22nd. For information, visit NCAA.com slash tickets. The second annual ESPNU Warrior Classic returns to East Hartford, Connecticut on Saturday, April 23rd. Don't miss this top-level lacrosse doubleheader. UMass is back in search of a repeat victory, but will lacrosse powerhouse Hofstra be too much to handle? Then, 10-time national champion Syracuse faces up-and-coming Big East rival Rutgers. Be there April 23rd at Rensselaer Field. Get your tickets now. Call 1-800-745-3000 or visit Ticketmaster.com today.